So it's a series of videos talking about the indicators. Um, I really need to redo these because the old videos had like a terrible audio. This should be a better audio and you can hear me clearly. Um, so let's talk about the stop loss clusters. We call these SLCs. Okay, so if you come across SLC, that's what that means, stop loss cluster. And um, what it is essentially in a nutshell, they are um, areas of liquidity and it, often it fuels price. Uh, if the big fish know where the liquidity is, they'll push the price to the point of um, where they heard they're going to get stopped out, to the point of their threshold and their patience as well. <laughs> because if you think about it, they've got near infinite funds and we've only got finite funds. They can outlast us. They can make price go sideways for so long, we'll become impatient and then we can exit or become so impatient we'll get frustrated and then we will do something silly and then it will cost us. Um, so the thing is that they can push price sideways up or down pending to their whim, to you know the circumstance that they're in. If they want to go sideways, that's fine. They can accumulate so many retail herd positions and eventually we'll have a breakout and then we'll, uh, we could have a bi-directional breakout here as well, which we saw a lot. Uh, on pound USD, uh, which we covered in Discord. Um, so we've got to be careful when it does things like that. It's very, very hard, very tricky. But at least with the SLCs, you can see um, where price is going to gravitate to. Okay, and um, so the key thing is with this uh, bit of information here is that it sets uh, gives the price action fuel um, for the plus price fluctuation. So you can see how here we had a bi-directional stop hunt um, while it was accumulating and then we had the distribution <laughs> and up we go and uh, it would have continued higher pending you know where their stops are and it just it moves it, you can argue it's going to move higher up anyway because we'd have break out but if they're going to move their stops higher it's got an additional reason to pump so we've got a technical reason and we've got a sentimental reason and uh, it will punish them until the point of their extreme, uh, up to their patience, and then we can, you know, we can top out. <laughs> um, so going back to this, they can push price sideways up or down, you know, and do whatever they want. But we can't, we, we can't do that. They they can push the price, but we can't. We have to sustain it, or at least have visibility of where they're going to target, and then we can join them. Okay. So uh, this week we saw price go up higher and cross dollar. We had visibility of the SLCs, so targeting the SLCs above was the uh, correct thing to do because we went up higher, and um, that there's a sentimental reason for it, but not necessarily fundamental. Uh, you could argue there's probably a fundamental case for a strong USD, but a sentimental case is that we probably could have come higher, and um, we had a lot of trap sellers on the Euro USD as well, which is covered on the order book, but. Um, We'll get there when we get there okay so just to say is that you know we had a breakout we had the reason for the punishment um technical and we had the sentimental reason as well okay and um it, you can use it to determine the entry and exit points we like to target the their exit point where they're going to exit the market from being stopped out and uh, that's where you can set your take profit it's, it's quite reliable You'll find when you um, install the indicators, have visibility of the SLCs, and then you'll see reactions off them all the time. And if you can combine the SLCs with supply and demand, or you know, fair value gaps, or uh, break of structure, or anything sophisticated in the technical analysis, then it works really well because this is a, obviously a key point in the sentiment. But if you combine that with a technical level, then you know, it gives you the double confidence for the bounce. And you might not even see this even coincide with a technical. And you think, why did it bounce there? Well, it went down to take stops. <laughs> right? So why they put their stops there, we don't really know for sure, but they accumulated at that point. What will normally happen is that they'll place their stops at round numbers very commonly uh, because they don't have time in the day to really have a look at the chart um, so they think, well, what's the easiest thing? I'll put it at 1.5 and then I can move it if it gets closer. And what, what you'll find is that price gets closer to 1.5 and then they'll move their stops. 
and they think they're outsmarting the market. But what's going to probably happen is going to do this because they've got their stops there and they're like, oh, I don't like the idea of being stopped out. I better move it. And they move it up in like 50 pip increments and then it goes up in those 50 pip increments and it punishes them. Um, so definitely really, really, really powerful. And um, a good thing here is to where to put your stop loss. You wouldn't put your stop loss at the SLC because that's the target. So they recommend having a slightly wider stop loss uh, above or below the SLC. So this is like a magnet for price. So you want to try and avoid that magnet if possible. And uh, if you know the trend, and you can see if we're trending lower, obviously you'd probably want to be targeting the SLC below. Um, a good tip, actually, if we're trending lower, a good thing to do is that you can um, sell at the SLC above. So if we have a, if we're trending lower and then we pump, that's like a counter trend move. And so we should be seeking to reverse that. So if we did this, it would have been counter trend because we're actually trending down. But if it did that and it cut the SLC, that's a really good entry point because it's just come up to take liquidity and then it's going to resume its downtrend. Right, so that's a good tip. So for gold, for example, we were trending higher. We, were, if it ever dips, we're looking to buy the SLC, and up we go. And we covered this all the time in Discord and in Telegram as well. And so the key thing is to identify the trend, and then that's a key component to using the SLCs. So if we're trending lower, and then we have a big irrational spike. Maybe it's an interest rate decision or whatever, and we have a SLC probe above when we shouldn't have, that's a good place to enter for a sell. And then you can target the SLC below. Uh, so it's really good, that's, that's been very profitable. And obviously the bad spots, you wouldn't place your stop there, you'd place them slightly above or below. And um, wanna be careful with range and stuff as well. If we're going sideways, it's a little bit of a gamble. I prefer to trade it if it's trending. We can see if we're trending lower because we made lower highs, um, sorry, lower lows and lower highs, see? So we obviously are trending lower. There's not buying interest if we're making lower lows, okay? So be careful going sideways. And um, obviously do come have a look at the website when you get through time, there's loads of information, just a quick overview. And it just gives you like a, an average of the liquidity and then it summarizes the point of the, um, of its distribution. Uh, the the point of um, the highest activity at that point. So obviously there is the bit that's sticking out the most <laughs> in layman's terms. And so therefore that's the um, point where it's probably going to reverse or at least a target. Okay. It may not reverse because it will depend on the trend and also will depend on fundamental factors as well, uh, depending on the instrument. Okay. But a good target for sure. And then that's that logic there because it's we're looking at like a, we're looking at like a uh, like a heat map, essentially. Okay, it just should be fairly clear. You know that's a bit sticking out the most, so therefore that's where we're going to target, and that's the area of the most uh, pain <laughs> for the retail guys. And uh, then we come. Okay, uh, obviously you can change the indicator settings. You've got history as well. Uh, really cool, very useful, and uh, that is the SLC video. So. Very, very, very powerful. This, in my opinion, is an absolute necessity um, in your trading toolkit, okay? So you might not fully understand the other indicators, but for me, I would say this is absolutely essential for targeting reasons and also to get an awareness of what's going on and also tell you about the psychology of the retail mind as well, the, the hive mind. You can begin to understand what they do and we've seen that they use the round numbers and then they'll move their stops and also they're really stubborn <laughs> as well. And what will probably happen is that it will go up and go up, and go up and it will blow them and then they'll lose their account. And then of course they will leave the casino and they will get new traders in and they'll do the same. So they've come in without a plan and they've got terrible risk management. So it's if you've got a trading plan, which you should have if you're trading, at least have like a rules then just add the SLC into those rules and uh, definitely always try and have this on your chart because it's so powerful. Uh, so the next video will be on the ratios uh, because that's an easy one to explain and don't forget we've got this uh, Black Friday special but the time you see this video it would have expired but 
You can also always catch it next year. It's always around November in you know every year, so you can always catch it next year. But we've got a seventy percent off, which is pretty amazing.